Hi, welcome to Fort White Farms and our Harvested Home Dinner. My name is Owen Campbell and I'm the kitchen coordinator here at Fort White Farms. Um, so I, you know, plan our programming in the kitchen and our menus and our recipes with the youth that work here. And this summer we've been really hard at work in the fields, making sure all of our vegetables are growing, being delicious and getting harvested at the right times. And now we're bringing all of that together to make this Harvest at Home dinner for you and to say thank you for investing in us and in our youth. So this summer we have been lucky enough to have a small team of youth working here at the farm alongside us. We've been working hard planting vegetables, watching those vegetables grow, weeding those vegetables, washing those vegetables so that it can all come together at the end of the summer in this fantastic fall dinner at home for you. One of the favorite uh, projects that we've been working on this summer with a youth team has been these videos, these modules that we're creating, much like the one that we're going to be showing you today. We've done modules on gardening, on how to raise rabbits, how to raise broiler chickens, how to raise uh, laying hens, and now this module, which will be how to cook a really nice dinner for you and your family. So join us in creating this delicious fall dinner for your family, and I hope you enjoy. Hi again. So the first part of your meal tonight is gonna be a simple tomato and Hungarian pepper uh, salsa. So first I'm gonna show you how to dice a tomato. Not a lot of people know that a serrated knife, otherwise known as a bread knife, is the best way to cut a tomato because the edges grip the tomato more than a flat knife does. So you're just gonna cut the top off. You can cut this up later or you can um, put it in your compost. So then you're gonna turn your tomato on the flat side because it's safer that way. And just cut it in half. And then just cut a few slices in it. I'm gonna do six slices. And you're gonna want it to be in half again so you can just flip your halves over like that. Two more slices. It's gonna be a big salsa, it's a fresh salsa, so it's gonna be a bit rough, not like the ones you get in the stores. I just wanna do a bite-sized dice, like so. And then into your bowl. And then we're gonna move on to our onion. So for our onion, we are gonna use a flat knife. I'm gonna first cut the onion in half. So we'll put that half over here for later. We're just gonna use half of the onion in the salsa recipe. Then cut the tip off. You wanna leave the root end on the onion. Peel back the first two layers, maybe, of the papery skin. Then we're gonna dice the onion, uh, but we're gonna score it first. So you're gonna lay the onion on its flat side again. And you're just gonna take your knife, sometimes if you're cutting board right up to the edge there, and cut lines in, but not all the way through. You want to leave the root end intact. I'm gonna do three. So you can see here that it is still intact. And you're gonna cut lines, same thing. Don't go through the root, through the onion in the opposite direction. Like that, and then your onion is diced. Now, you can give your onions a bit more chop here make them a little bit smaller if you'd like since it's raw onion in your salsa. So with hot peppers you may want to, if you're going to include them in your meal, sorry, uh, put gloves on. I'm going to put gloves on <laughs> because I am always forgetting that I cut a pepper and then I push up my glasses and wipe my eyes and it will burn for a very long time. So we're going to cut the pepper in half. I'm only going to use half in our salsa half off to the side. So the seeds and the ribs are what makes your pepper really hot. I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna cut the root, the tip off, just like so. Then you're just going to cut some sticks, some bonnets, like so. Then this way, and we're just gonna dice it again. It's a little bit smaller than your onion was, a lot smaller than your tomato was. that to my salsa. So next we're gonna add our lime juice. So if your limes feel a little bit hard, you can roll them on your countertop to soften them up a bit. Um, that will help when you're juicing them. So I don't have a juicer today. I'm just gonna cut it in half and use my hand. We're just gonna squeeze the lime. Because I don't have a juicer, I'm gonna use uh, two limes just because I'm not gonna get as much juice out of them with my own strength as I would if I was using a juicer. I'll overall this one too. And I've already added the salt and pepper. 
and you can add salt and pepper to taste as much as you need or as much as you don't. And we're going to give it a quick stir. And then we have our beautiful crostini that we've already toasted and grilled, actually. And we're just going to spoon your salsa on top of your crostinis. There we go. And your appetizer. Okay, so next we're gonna show you how to prepare the squash. The squash we're using today is a kobucha squash. Uh, typically there's a little handle on it, just break that off. And we're gonna cut it in half. So we're gonna start like this, and once your knife is in, you're gonna get a rag and hold the tip down so that you don't cut yourself if it pops up on you, which I have done before. So once it's through halfway, you can lift it up and start again if your squash is big. If your squash is smaller, you might be able to just do this in one chop. Okay, so now we're just gonna scoop the insides of the squash out, just like you would with a pumpkin. You're just gonna use a spoon, super simple. You wanna get the seeds as well as the guts. In this so we're just gonna use a vegetable peeler to peel the squash. Um, it might take a little while, but it's definitely the safest way to do it. And if you do feel confident with your knife skills, you can always use a paring knife or a chef's knife to cut the um, peel off as well. Okay, so next Jaden's going to show you how to prep our zucchinis and our leeks. Here on the farm, they grow in the dirt and get a lot of soil inside their layers. It's kind of hard to get off. So we're going to put it in some cold water and then we're just going to swish it around to get uh, as much of the soil out as we can. So now that we have all of our vegetables prepped and ready to go, we're just going to smash some garlic cubes, cloves, pour our vegetables and our seasonings into our roasting pan. And then we're just gonna sprinkle a bit of salt and pepper on top of those chicken pieces. Okay, so now that we have our meal done, we're ready for the last thing, which is our pan sauce. So what we've got here is once you've pulled your meal out of the oven, you want to pour all those delicious juices into a saucepan and put that on your oven at medium to high heat, about seven, I guess it is, on an electric oven. I'm going to bring those juices up to a boil and add your extra stock to it, which I have already done. I believe it's about three quarters of a cup. So once it starts to simmer, you can add uh, your flavoring, which we are using apple cider vinegar for ours. Add that in. Bring it up again to a simmering boil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our compound butter. So this is a tarragon onion butter. We want to add one ball at a time and then whisk that until it's melted. The reason you want to add one at a time and whisk until it's melted before adding the next one is to keep your sauce from breaking and that's when your fat separate from your solids. So adding your butter slowly will help stop that. So once all of your butter has been incorporated into your pan sauce, you're gonna add your cornstarch slurry, which is just cornstarch and water. So what that's gonna do is help your sauce to thicken so it becomes um, more like a sauce and less like a jus. So it'll stick to your meats and your potatoes and your lentil loaf if that's what you're eating. Gonna stir that up. I'm just gonna pour it in slowly, whisking at the same time, about a teaspoon at a time. You don't want to put too much in. Cornstarch thickens really, really quickly. You want to make sure that you continue to whisk as you pour it in so that it doesn't clump. And once it's reached the thickness that you desire, Done. So I usually like my sauce to be able to coat the back of the spoon. And you see how it sticks to the spoon. It's done. 